Hi lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I am reading the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comics, volumes 1 through 4. This covers issues 1 through 16 of the main My Little Pony comic series. These feel very much like they're the television show, so if you like Friendship is Magic, definitely suggest going into these comics and reading them. They're just more fun uh, side stories. So volumes 1 and 2 are each a complete story arc of about four comics each. Volumes three and four are both two storylines each, so two comics per storyline. Because we're so far into the series, the uh, artists and authors have changed a bit. Um, I think issues one through 12 all have writing and art by Katie Cook and Andy Price, and volume four has writing by Heather Nuffer? And art by Brenda, Hi and art by Brenda Hickey and Amy Neverson. And the description down below will be me correcting all the artists and writers and which issues are in each volume. The art in this comic series very much looks like the television show. They look like the characters. It helps the fact that it's animated, <laughs> so you're able to just copy the animation style in the comics, which I love a few of the panels go off and do their own comic thing um it's definitely playing with the fact that yes we're comics but also it feels like the television show which is an excellent blend of the two and i found these fun and light and um there's dark moments in them with villains and everything but it doesn't get much darker than the television show does either so yeah if you can watch the show you can read the comics Basically, I'm loving this comic book series. I'm not going to review the rest of them individually, so I'm just going to do one through four. Um, I'm just going to do volumes one through four now. Um, basically, assume that I am also enjoying the rest of this comic book series. I do think you should probably watch the at least season one of the show, um, a few of the episodes, so you know who these characters are, because they don't really introduce who, you know, Twilight or Fluttershy are. They're just in there. Same with the villains, like we see the changelings and Nightmare Moon. If you're trying to read this having never watched the show, you might be a little bit confused. Unless you're really good at just going with the flow. Volume 1, the story arc there, uh, features the changelings and Queen Chrysalis. Every pony in Ponyville is acting really strange. And the main six discover that Queen Chrysalis has uh, replaced everybody in Ponyville with their changeling duplicates. Queen Chrysalis has also kidnapped the Cutie Mark Crusaders, um, who are basically the younger sisters of the main six, and so she is holding them as a trap. But the main six is like, we know this is a trap, but also we need to go save our sisters. So they go on this quest to go find them and defeat Queen Chrysalis. I love the changelings, so this was tons of fun to see them show up again. Queen Chrysalis is one of the few villains that shows up in this comic book series and stays a villain and is actually kind of really creepy and threatening um but also she's very pretty and i love that also about her i love villains so i really love the story arc i love the side adventure they go on and the quests they have to go through to find the cutie mark crusaders i love the cutie mark crusaders just like talking their way through like they're captured but then they just start driving queen crystal is crazy with just like their their non-stop chatter with each other and talking about how their sisters are going to come save them and like trying to amuse themselves um so she's getting really really irked and that was really funny to see so volume one is amazing it's an excellent starting place volume two is a completely different storyline it doesn't build off volume one so you don't have to read the comics like read the story arcs together but you don't have to read the story arcs in order so in volume two we we have Princess Luna, and she is the saved Princess Luna. She's no longer Nightmare Moon. Um, but we find out that the thing that made her Nightmare Moon might actually be like a separate darkness entity called Nightmare that lives on the moon that may have infected her. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. This one's a little bit confusing with its setup, but I love Luna so much. She's my favorite pony, and I loved her as Nightmare Moon. Um, so I loved getting to see the darkness in this comic again. It, it gets creepy, but not any creeper, creepy, not 
any worse than when Luna was a dark nightmare moon at the beginning of the show, um, or the changelings. Um, so this one definitely has a darkness to it, but I don't think it's too terrible. Um, so anyway, Princess Luna needs to team up with the main six to defeat this darkness and save the creatures on the moon. I didn't even realize that there were creatures living on the moon, so I loved getting that tidbit and getting to just see the moon and how they figure out how they're gonna do it. How do you how do you travel to the moon? Um I loved this story arc so much. And might be my favorite. One and two are both really good and I'm not sure whether I like volume one or volume two better. Um but they're both pretty amazing. My two favorite villains came back. Yay. So I was very happy with the first two. Volume three is actually comprised of two different story arcs. The first one that sees Big Mac going off to, he needs nails basically to fix this gazebo on the farm. But he goes into town not realizing that there's this giant festival. So he's trying to get around and through every pony, ponyville who's off partying. And like, hey, Big Mac, you showed up and trying to get him to do festival stuff um, before he tries to get to the hardware store. Um, it's lots of crazy side stories, but also it's from Big Mac's point of view. So Big Mac is a character that doesn't talk a lot. He pretty much only says, yep, or nope. And so we actually get to see him reacting to everybody and what he's thinking. And so this was such a great insight into who Big Mac is as a character. Um, also, it's just a fun side story. There's no major villain attacking Ponyville. Um, it's just, it's light, it's sweet, it's fun. I loved this one. The second story arc in here featured Shining Armor and Cadence when they were in high school and them falling in love. Also, by the way, this one isn't totally set up as being in the 1980s. So I love the big hair and the leg warmers and the references to the movies and the music of the 80s. It's I love the background in this one as well, as well as being very much an homage to just John who used movies in general. So we have Cadence, who is a princess, as one of the very popular girls in school and Shining Armor as an absolute nerd and dork. He's got his friends and they're playing ogres and oubliettes, which is their version of Dungeons and Dragons. Um... And he definitely has a crush on Cadence. He's trying to get up his nerve to ask Cadence out. But, like, how does, like, the biggest nerd in the school ask out, like, the most popular girl? Um, especially when she's literally a princess. <laughs> um, so seeing their romance and shining armor kind of strike out a little bit. Um, we definitely have, like, every pony in the school fawning over Princess Cadence. Um, and how she reacts to shining armor. And of course, they end up getting married in the show. So like, we know they're going to end up getting together eventually. Um, it's really sweet. It's really adorable. Volume 4 changes over writers and artists, and it takes on a slightly different feel. It still feels like the show, but it's not... It's eh. Not my biggest, biggest fan. Um, so the first storyline involves pirates, and the main six are on a pirate ship with Spike. And they end up on the side quest with the pirates and trying to escape, but they're also trying to get something else. And it was a little bit confusing. There are just like random references thrown in. It didn't seem like it had too coherent a plot line going on. It was not that much fun. It didn't really feel like the main six. Like it, there's nothing in it that didn't feel like the main six, but like it didn't feel like cohesive enough to be like this group of six friends. Um, so this is actually not my favorite, even though I really, really love pirates and I really wanted it to work, but somehow it just didn't. It just kind of fell flat. Um, and then the second half of this one is a storyline involving a bookworm, like a literal worm, a bookworm. So Twilight's library is under attack. This, this bookworm is eating all her books and it's a little terrifying to me as a figurative bookworm that all my books would end up getting eaten and destroyed and my library would be absolutely in tatters. It's especially a little bit terrifying thinking about Twilight's library, which has very rare specific books about magic, um, that those might actually be lost. So they have to figure out how to stop the bookworm. Thrown in throughout this, throughout the storyline is tons of references to different book genres. 
and getting to see the ponies doing things like um, Rarity's great romance novels, but also her mysteries and just fairy tales retold from the main six perspective. It was fun and interesting and light and um, as a bookworm, I loved the homage to it, but also it was a little bit terrifying and probably the one that actually struck me the hardest is like, I don't want my library destroyed. Um, so volume four, I only ended up giving three stars. I'm pretty sure I gave volumes one through three all five stars or four or five stars. Um, so I definitely love volumes one through three, volume four, not as good, but it still feels like it's My Little Pony. You know, sometimes you just don't have an episode that resonates as well with you. So since I have issue 72, let's just throw that one in there too. Writing in this one is by Tom Zaylor and art is by Agnes Garboski. And uh, this one feels very much like the episode The Perfect Pair. So this one sees the Apple siblings, uh, particularly Applejack and her sister Apple Bloom, Apple Blossom. Why don't I remember her name? Anyway, they find their mother's apple pie recipe, which is apparently the best apple pie that Granny Smith has ever tasted, and she has never been able to replicate it. And so they, the siblings go on this adventure to figure out the recipe for this, this apple pie, um, and what made it so great and trying to replicate it exactly right. They go on a journey trying to find all the ingredients that their mom used, and they end up meeting all of her mom's friends and finding out more stories about their parents, um, which was really sweet and adorable. This one, this one's amazing. This is definitely my favorite pony comic that I've read so far. Big Mac helps out. So does Pinkie Pie. She gets in on it. She's an honorary apple. Um, so it's very fitting, especially she's really good at baking as well. So she's all about trying to help them figure this out. Um, I love any chance we get to find out more about um, the apple siblings' parents. Like, they're, there's so little we know about them. So any little clue that we get is just like so awesome. So this one is definitely very heartwarming and sweet. And it's also silly. It's got apple. It's got Pinkie Pie in it. So there's definitely crazy tangents happening in it, which also makes it fun. Tons and tons of fun. So this one's a one-off, which is great. So those are my thoughts on the My Little Pony Friendship Is Magic series. Let me know in the comments below what you think of these comics or the television show in general. And do you have any other reading recommendations? Which series should I be picking up? So yeah, peace out. I love you guys. I keep reading. Bye.